So welcome to this edition of ROV Meditation Practice Tips. And today, Stephen and I are going to discuss how gamma brain waves are kind of like UFOs in the brain. And we're going to go into a discussion of what we mean by that and also how you can use the insights from EEG headsets to deepen your meditation practice and some important tips for doing that. So I want to begin with this metaphor of UFOs. So this um, couple months ago, now my wife and younger son and I went to Sedona and we went on a UFO sighting tour at night. And our host, Melinda, uh, gave us these night vision goggles, military light vision, night vision goggles that amplified the ambient light of the sky, something like 5,000 times. Anyway, it enabled you to see light that you wouldn't normally be able to see. And as we looked up at the sky, she uh, told us how to recognize, oh, there's a satellite, moves very slowly and steadily. And here's an airplane and it flashes in a certain way. Here's a military plane it flashes with a different sequence. Um, here's some other space debris. And then look at that. There's this object that moves slower and then faster. It kind of zigzags. And then when it reaches this place called the portal, poof, it just disappears. So we're looking at these and we saw numerous ones of these over the course of three hours. I mean, I would say probably about 25-ish in that time. And they all had this different signature of moving um, at varying speeds, moving back and forth, and then disappearing. And so with those night vision goggles, it's kind of like using a headset to look at brain waves. They enabled you to see something that you wouldn't normally see with your naked eyes. Then Melinda also told us about abduction experiences she had. And she described in detail the inside, what it was like to be inside this craft and discussions she had with those beings. And they told her how the whole propulsion system worked and how they steered the craft and from the inside of that craft, it's kind of like being inside your brain. You can see what's causing what you're seeing with the night vision goggles. Like you could see from inside your brain what was causing the gamma waves to appear on an EEG headset. So Stephen and I kind of thought this was a great metaphor for looking at gamma brain waves because we've, um, shown these graphs with various devices with this is a muse with um, flow time. Stephen has a focus calm on and they're all giving us these different brainwave signatures associated with our meditative state and characterized by gamma brainwaves. So just to refresh or for those of you who haven't seen these graphs, I'm gonna share my screen and just show you a few of these. So Stephen, if you can enable my screen share there. And here we go. So here, it's, if uh, you've watched some of our videos before, you've seen this Muse graph and the yellow is the are these elevated gamma brain waves. And then there's beta, alpha, theta, delta brain waves here. And these are in what we would call either an elevated energy state in subtle energy meditation or in an expanded state or in a state where we're experiencing love radiating out from the heart. Um, so this graph shows an alternation between kind of a stillness, quiet state into these this expanded elevated energy and then down into stillness and back and forth. And then we found the same thing with flow time, uh, same sort of pattern. It did measure the brain waves a little bit differently. 
um, because it has different levels of filtering, but you see the same shape of graph here. And then I went into the lab and had a 19 electrode EEG cap and had a um, uh, doctor review uh, the data from the same type of meditation. And here's the raw score data. And there you see these kind of high electrical charges there again, correlating to the brain waves. And they were here, they were shown in the frontal sensors. Um, so that led a lot of people to say, oh, well, it has something to do with what you're doing with your eyes. Um, so you're moving your eyes. Um, and we went, no, our eyes are fixed. And then there as some talk about, well, when you're fixing your eyes, there's some tension in your eyes and that give, creates an electromagnetic field and charge. And so that's what's giving this high electrical reading um, in those parts of the meditation. The curious thing about that though, is it, that's not fully explanatory because if you look at a brain map of my baseline state, my resting state as shown in the lab, if you look down here at the bottom, you can see that there's gamma waves in the occipital region, in the back part of the brain, in these bottom two rows. There's actually a good amount of occipital gamma. So yes, there may be something happening in the front of the brain and related to the eyes and fixing the gaze, concentrating the focus until you get really absorbed and have energy just um, an energy field created by that absorption, that fixing and concentration of attention. And it's probably not the full story because there's these gamma waves in other parts of the brain as well. So I'll stop my share here and pass it over to Stephen, who's gonna talk about a client that he worked with um, who's been in our subtle energy meditation course and who's continuing to do some work with Stephen uh, in terms of raising energy in meditation, the felt experience of that and how that shows up in brainwaves on Muse. So Stephen. Kevin, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And, and much love to everybody. And uh, I'm very grateful that you can join us for this uh, UFO discussion. <laughs> so just as Kevin was saying, uh, the, for us, really the, this exploration and, and these are all hypotheses i mean we're not we're not stating anything categorically we're merely saying that a little bit like looking at the ufos when you look at your brain you definitely start to see patterns and signatures that you get very curious about in the same way as you might about it when a ufo appears and and it's unidentified and in many ways that's the same way we viewed gamma it's somewhat unidentified and there's no doubt that there's kind of a, a clash of opinions amongst the neuroscientists about exactly what gamma does. There was recently uh, a paper that looked at some of the past research of going all the way back to Lutz in 2003 and some of the gamma um, uh, research that had been done back there on advanced meditators. And they said, oh, look, maybe it's not, it's not as substantial or you know, it can't be verified in the same way as they thought back in 2003, 2004, and those, those years where they were doing early research into exactly the same kinds of uh, frequencies that Kevin shows in his uh, frontal, uh, in the frontal sensors on, on the headset. So, so this made both Kevin and I curious because we definitely show uh, propensities or um, potentials in our brain waves that, that perhaps you don't see in in the graphs of, uh, of um, the meditators that we've looked at uh, over time. And so we were curious as to whether it might show up in meditators that we were working with in, in the same way as it had showed up in our brain. And, and what would that mean? And, and what would that mean for you, those of you that are listening? So again, staying on that UFO hypothesis. So I really want to make it clear, we are not making a statement about what this, this is all about. We want you to make your own, you know, assertion, your own decisions around a bit like the Buddha said, you know, explore everything, find, find out every aspect you have, dismiss nothing, 
you know, I think Kevin, your wife, beautiful wife, Monica says, dismiss nothing. And I absolutely agree. <laughs> dismiss nothing when it comes to the brainwaves. As you look deeply within it and with real curiosity, no matter what headset you're using, look, look right into it and, and record a lot. You know, Kevin and I record a at least a thousand times each, you know, to get these constant patterns and to look at them and to seek example, to seek the opinions of, you know, um, neuroscientists of labs and so on. So, so just, so, so some of you will have seen this um, before some of the sharing that I initially did a while ago. So in my um, graph, similar to Kevin's there, there were, so I, I'm showing all the uh, at both frontal and um, temporal senses. So this is AF8, which is right frontal. So again, it shows this uh, high gamma similar to Kevin's, but a, you know, a little different in its formation. I always call my graphs a little bit like a dolphin dive because of the way that I, I, I draw the energy up in the back of my um, brain and, they, and then it curves up. When the energy comes up, it tends to <laughs> curve and do look a bit, bit like a dolphin diving through the waves. So that's a, that's a frontal gamma one. This is the same meditation, the same graph. Here is uh, TP9, so this is the left temporal one. Again, showing that same arc of gamma, just like Kevin does. Um, the, then TP10, which is your right temporal. Again, the same things. And um, then uh, AF7, and again, these same arcs of, of gamma. So, you know, we were curious about them because they showed up in all the senses, pretty much in the same pattern. You know, a little bit, a little bit of difference, but it, in all the senses, it showed these same gamma arcs, no matter what we did. And I'm not trying to. I'm a very light gamma. Kevin's, I call Kevin Super Gamma. We used to nickname him the Hulk, and because he really, it, it's when when he does these energy um, uh, and and concentration and absorption techniques, Kevin's very finely attuned to going into that with with a lot of power. Mine's sort of like this light you know, hummingbird style, where I kind of just, oh, I'll let it go up, and it sort of flies up there, and it feels incredibly easeful, so I'm not, I'm not doing much at all, and I used to have a lot of discussions with people in the music community about, no, no, I'm, I, I'd show them how it would still, when I had my eyes downwards, the gamma would still rise, when I had my eyes level, it would still rise, when I had my eyes up, it still rise, it didn't depend on my eye situation or whether my eyes were moving or whether they weren't and that was primarily because of the technique having done you know 30 40 years of um well actually 40 40 or so years of kriya yoga and 30 something years of tumo or in a fire the tibetan in a fire practices um they're 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 very much in a spine and a little bit like joe Dispenza, which i'll talk about in, in a few minutes is about working with the cerebrospinal fluid and energizing that um, that alchemical water in your spine, the, you know, the power with the charged particles in the spine working actually with that energy. So, so that, that, that's curious. And I'd, I'd, um, I'd looked, you know, with the help of uh, many of our wonderfully friendly neuroscientists at the sort of what the, what was happening in the base, those lower chakras, and they always had that same, you know, uh, uh, the delta, it had strong delta, again, I, I'm not making any ass assertions here about the, the rightness or wrongness of this. It just showed, you know, high delta, theta at around, around about the Schumann resonance of the resonance of something, seven point something, and alpha again around about the Schumann resonance of about 14. So there were these strong characteristics that always had in every, all my graphs, they showed that, you know, delta between zero to whatever that is, 0, 1 to 1.5, and then theta around 7, 7.8, and then alpha around 14. And um, they always showed this high theta and this gamma, which ran consistently at about 44, and then you can see again about 66 or something like that. Um, and they were, yeah, they, they were pretty consistent about around every one of my graphs. And then when I went to the labs in Japan, and they also did this, um, they, they used their labs and their, their analysis. And they, they, so here's the meditative part, here's the resting part, here's the resting part. And you can see again, 
it, it's a bit hard to tell because it tilt, tilt is dark blue and gamma is light blue, but you can see this is the light blue gamma. And it's very clearly, uh, these are, these are uh, changes in time over, so it's frequency content ratio. So you can see the ratio of gamma over this particular uh, meta is very high indeed. Um, and that's what they see in the in the graph. They asked me, I had sort of a, you can see this is quite short. I had about a minute's preparation time, three minute to, to show the meditation, then a, you know, a few minutes after. So it was just, a, this is just a three minute test. So I just literally just let the, exactly like I've been explaining, let the hummingbird fly or the dolphins soar and it, the, the gamma just simply rise. And they, all the, the scientists that were doing the analysis in the lab, they sort of raised their eyebrows, go, oh, very concentrated. <laughs> you know, oh, very, very good, you know, in terms of what they were seeing, because they were just seeing, they were watching it on their screens and they could see that I could immediately shift into, you know, within this, period of what is it, the 100, you know, it's about a 60 second um, period They that I can then shift into this very easeful gamma flow, which as I, you can see it arcs in that same way as Kevin does. So Kevin's got that double kind of gamma arc because of the way he's doing the technique. And it was the same in the labs in Japan. So that was really useful for me and useful for Kevin and I, because it showed exactly the same propensity, the same signature, the same, uh, arc because we were really interested at that stage in, in exploring, not, not making assumptions, not making any kind of decisions about gamma, but just merely the fact that this showed in Kevin's lab reports, whether he used Muse or I used Muse, whether I was in a Japanese lab or he was in another lab, it, it, it showed the same quality. That, so we got really curious and I thought, just as Kevin was explaining, what about if we you know, if we look at, say, one of our students, so this is a client who's agreed to um, be, be presented. Uh, so this is Louise. She's the most amazing being, an accountant, uh, somebody whose heart is right in love for children. So she's got a um, really amazing ability in working with, with young people, young, very young, young children. And so she came to me, she'd done her ROV course, and she had really she worked really hard. She's one of those, you know, beautifully dedicated souls that has a, a, um, a, a desire to really um, perfect whatever it is that she's given. And, and she had worked through our ROV course and had wonderful results. And so she was in a place where she could get a very calm graph. So I'm going to show you by um, going to her mind monitor um, graphs, what that looks like and you'll see uh when i share the screen here um so kevin you can see that okay can't, can't you at this point yep so yeah, yeah yeah okay so you can see so i'm just going to explain what happened to her in, in this particular uh exercise is that uh, during the week i i'd been working with her on this you know this hypothesis that in fact the, the gamma is um, a, a correlation, not just to an ocular artifact, but it's actually correlated to energy that moves within the cerebral spinal fluid. So that, the, that by raising and squeezing, and just as Joe Dispenza says, working with the um, the inner energies of the inner spine, there, especially the lower three energy centers, that by squeezing or working with that lower energy over time with practice, that those charged particles will actually rise up through the spine in, in that fluid and will uh, basically trigger your brain to give you these, you know, gamma responses. So for, for me, one of my hypotheses is that gamma is an art, art, after effect of what the, it's not the, it's not prior to, it's a little bit like Kevin's occipital gamma, that his frontal gamma is actually an after effect of what is the natural state of an, you know, elevated conscious brain. And so Louise was a good test case because she had not been able to get that gamma surge. And she asked me one week to, um, she said, I really want to experience Kundalini. So I said, okay, during the week, what I want you to do is simply practice drawing the energy up with your inward breath up into the heart 
And then as you breathe out during the week, breathe out love to all beings. So simply that. So be aware of the energy of this love and compassion because, you, you know, dur during the all those gamma graphs you saw of mine, all I'm really doing is drawing this love and compassion up the spine, so to speak. It's like that's Yogananda's Kriya technique, which I did did for so many years. So it's a really, it's like a prayer in the spine. That's how I'd refer to it. So I, that's all I got here to do is simply draw this love up the spine with the inward breath. So a gentle squeeze of the perineum, gentle squeeze in the base of the spine, just kind of connect to get this felt sensation of connecting in with the base of the spine. Squeeze, draw the energy up to the heart and then exhale out through the heart and just to do that. And she said for the first um, half of the week, nothing happened. And then she said the most amazing thing happened. She would, and you know, it was not uh, to do with any one particular thing other than this repeated practice. She said about halfway through the week, suddenly on one particular occasion when she was doing this, she felt the energy rush, you know, quite spontaneously and unbidden by her and, and certainly not um, something that she was trying to do. This natural flow of energy flowed up into the left-hand side of her brain and started to tingle. She said she felt the whole left-hand side of her brain energized. And then suddenly it, sent, it was like it sent a message to the right-hand side of her body. And she said the tingling switched and the whole right-hand, she said the entire right-hand side of her body felt like it was supercharged. And she got this you know, resonant energy hum or frequency right down the right hand side of the body and she said i mean i could tell it really kind of obviously um really stimulated kind of uh, a deep questioning of well, what's happening to me why why is that that's something completely out of the blue something i hadn't expected so then uh, she related to that to me and so we sat down and i uh, encouraged her to look this time at drawing the energy all the way up the spine, doing the same thing, drawing it up and then breathing out through the third eye. So drawing it up and down. So what, what I do in, in what I do in the Kriya technique is I draw it up to a particular point, up to the back of the medulla, up in the back of the skull there, and then down. So the drawing up with the inward breath, down, up, down. And then on the last one, drawing up and out, and going out through the third eye and expressing love to the planet. So she did that. And what you're going to notice, so here's her graph here. And you can see the first part. So around about 4.38 p.m., she's breathing the, what she was doing during the week, this love in the heart. And you can see this is a fairly telltale sign that we'd noticed that the delta. And again, I'm not saying anything about the accuracies of the graph. And you'll notice all the BFGF. Meaning, meaning bad fit, good fit, around about this early part. And that's partly because she's starting to work with the energies in, in the spine. And so she's breathing and there's probably some adjusting going on with the headset itself. And it's probably going into, because there's, there's, a, there's a movement in the body. So the, again, I'm not making any statements about the accuracy of it, merely just to notice that actually this is just a particular state and a cue which is breathing up into the heart, breathing down into the base of the spine, breathing up into the heart and out, and breathing down to the base of the spine. And then she goes into this next section here, which is kind of around about 440, you know, 8, 446, 448, is her kind of characteristic calm state where she's starting to tune into the energies. And she has a typical, Louise most of the time gets, you know, alpha over delta, and then over the this kind of knit energy showing, you know, the 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 beta beta theta gamma showing a, a knitted or, or concentrated focus, and she's so she's starting to move into this concentration. And you notice, of course, after these initial jaw errors, that it's reasonably clean for the remaining, you know, what is that fight? The remaining ten minutes of. The meditation and that her gamma starts to rise and it starts to kind of knit with the with beta and so that's that in itself is not that unusual that shows a good concentration but what is interesting is that when you start to look at the um when you actually start to look at the what she experienced which was this 
energy all the way down the right side of her body. When you take out the left uh, frontal and the left temporal, you can see here that actually what is what is characteristic of her meditation now is that the gamma, once it rises, you can see it moving all the way up into the dominant position on the right-hand side uh, and showing that there is a significant energy difference between what's happening on the right-hand side of her brain. So this is AF8 and TP10, the, the frontal and the um, temporal senses and the other side so if you if you then switch back if i switch back to um, the left hand side so you can see on the left hand side of her brain it's more her characteristic you know alpha delta theta with a with a um, knit of beta because of the concentration and so when we switch back to the right hand side of the brain we see that her that the her reported inner felt sensation and that is the inner felt sensation of this tremendous energy burst that she felt all the way down the right hand side of her body is is shown in the graph and it, interestingly enough when you just focus on the frontal so this is over temporal and frontal and when you just focus on the frontal it's even stronger you can see it shows something similar to, in fact, what uh, Kevin experienced and, and I experienced, and Kevin more predominantly so, is that as the gamma rose and it reaches that um, the filter, the filter that's on the news of 50 hertz, it it, it flatlines because it's it can't read above that. Point. So it makes an, an adjustment and it um, will not it won't show a reading above that point. So that we found out there was generally somewhere between 120 and 140 on the on the left but that that it's it's to do with the filter it's not actually to do with the 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 um vertical axis so it's it's to do with the filter that's on muse itself and that so that was a very curious um and very i thought very resonant uh, exploration based on what Kevin and I had been speaking about because and so when I looked into this I'm going to pass back to Kevin for for really some special thoughts around this but when um, uh, over the years you know along with those 40 or so years with um, Yogananda and the 30 or so years with Tumo and a fire practice with you know Dalai Lama and Tenzin Wangya Rinpoche and Mingyu Rinpoche you know who who've just given me the most incredible teachings the it's it's really led me to connect with a lot of wonderful people you know including dr joe Dispenza, who's doing amazing work out there for people who really want to you know put put this puts for example some of the tibetan practices or career practices into ordinary language and he speaks about when you are doing um the what he calls the pre-meditation breath is that you pull the mind out of the body by drawing the energy of the body's first three energy centers back up to the brain. And what happens is that as you, he explains that as you contract those, you know, intrinsic muscles all at the same time and follow the breath up to the brain, and specifically he talks about the pineal gland, that when your awareness um, reaches the pineal gland and you're pushing literally or drawing or pushing the cerebrospinal fluid. So this is the one of the, in my hypothesis of what, what is actually happening, this is one of the areas I'm very interested in exploring because I actually feel that, that I feel like a supercharged uh, wave or, or oceanic current is moving up my spine every time I do it. And it, I mean, it's incredible. It's exactly like Yogananda said, it, it's exactly like Milarepa, who was, you know, an adept in, in the inner fire or Tuma practice said, um, a great Tibetan mystic, is that there is this great shift in your um, spine and, and which Dr. Dispenza would describe as the cerebrospinal fluid moving up and then pushing up against the crystals of the pineal gland and activating the systems that cause the pineal gland, which is responsible in, in 
his opinion and other people's opinion. So this is just opin opinions, not again, not I'm not making any claims um, that it's responsible for transcendental experience and it becomes charged or electrically, uh, electrically stimulated. So the cerebrospinal fluid, as we know, has electrically charged particles. And when you do stimulate that or push that up against the brain or particular areas of the brain, it does make sense that there's going to be an electrical charge that you'll draw there. And that electrical cu current in the in the cerebrospinal fluid when it's pushed up against you know or pushed into the brain or, or pushed up against the crystals of any part of the brain including the pineal gland then they actually begin to um, resonate vibrate right with the electrical charge and it's that vibration that allows them to pick up these higher frequencies or pick up frequencies beyond our customary senses and the pineal gland or, or whatever as part of the brain that, that cerebrospinal fluid is moving up and against and transduces the, the frequencies, these higher frequencies into profound states, into profound you know, realizations, experiences, imagery, uh, visualizations, um, transcendent states. So when we pull that power of the you know, the lower dantian, because it's really fundamentally that when we pull the prana or the chi or the um, that shakti energy up through the body and back and into the brain, the brain can go into these heightened brainwave states. And that's what it is. And the gamma is an after it. The gamma is just merely reporting these heightened states. It's not, it, it's not a gamma brainwave state. It's actually a gamma message for you to say that you're evolving the body and, or, and brain into these heightened states and it's, so it's just as Kevin said it's not just to do with the frontal it's to do with all over the brain it's not just to do with the brain it's to do with the brain heart resonance and it's not just to do with the brain and heart it's to do with the whole you know nerve subtle energy body and the nervous system which is acting in coherence to move these charged particles up and into the brain. So, um, Kevin, back back to you on, <laughs> on that. I, I've spoken far too much. I, somebody stop me. <laughs> uh, thank you, Stephen. Yeah. So it's it's that that charge that you feel that Louise felt in in the whole left side and then the right side of her brain and and then her body. It's this charge that we're tuning into in subtle energy meditation that has a profound effect on uh, momentary, momentarily on our state of consciousness. Just everything is bright and open and expanded, and it may open the way to any number of different experiences and communications. And it's that felt sense that is so important. And that, that's what we really want to emphasize here is it like um, when I was in Sedona and I was looking up at the sky through the night vision goggles, it's kind of like looking at brain waves and you're saying, well, there's something there, but I don't know what it is. And then when you talk to Melinda, she's like, I was in there. I can tell you exactly what it is. And she describes all about what it was to be inside this craft. It's the same with your inner experience in meditation. That's when you look at a graph it's simply a correlation, one correlation among many of an inner state of an inner felt experience that is brought about by using a specific technique. So if you know the technique that you're using and you can be very specific about, okay, now I'm starting to use that technique and here's what I feel. And I know when I'm absorbed in that technique, because there's such a strong felt inner sensation that I'm like, ah, oh, that, that's it. That's the energy expansion. That's the lighting up of the brain, the lighting up of the heart, the lighting up of the body. Then you can look at the graph and say, oh, look, that's, you can see in the graph where that happened. Now, whether that's, however you describe that, this inner felt experience is transforming. It's something that completely changes your view of what we are as human beings, you experience yourself as an energy being, as a being who can tune into all kinds of different frequencies. 
And that's what we're teaching in this subtle energy meditation course. And that's what people start to experience, start to be able to awaken their inner senses and tune into these energy frequencies. And then they literally feel like they're lighting up your brain, lighting up your heart, lighting up your whole body, lighting up literally the whole field, the unified field, and you're experiencing that field, you're experiencing that connection, that life force. And that just changes your relationship to who you are, to others, and, and to life itself. So in that way, you can start to use devices like this in coordination with specific techniques and most importantly, this inner felt sensation of energy to transform your consciousness and transform life here on the planet. So Stephen and I just wanted to share that with you and hopefully it gave you some inspiration and some insight for how to use devices like this to expand your practice and, and transform your consciousness. So thank you, Stephen as always, and thanks to all of you for watching and for your practice.